What's up, YouTube? So today I want to talk about five things that I wish I knew when I first got into Bitwig. Hopefully this is going to help those newcomers to Bitwig understand the program a little bit more fluently. I also recently did a video about my thoughts, you know, a year after switching from Cubase to Bitwig. And there were a couple of points addressed in that video. And hopefully this will answer some of those questions. Anyway, without blabbering too much, let's dive in and have a look. So the first and probably most important thing that I wish I knew when I first got into Bitwig is control enter. What that is, is it's basically a shortcut to all of your shortcuts. So if you hit control enter, it basically launches a little window, which basically allows you to search for any function within the software. Not only does it allow you to quickly see what the hotkey for that function is, it also allows you to launch that function if there isn't a hotkey assigned. So let's say, for example, reverse. I didn't have a hotkey actually assigned to reverse, but I can quickly launch it via that hotkey menu, which is really, really, really cool. It obviously also works if we have our own uh, custom assignments. I have added some of my own custom hotkeys here, and those are all visible within the control enter. Okay, so number two is the operator's system. So this is something that works with both MIDI and audio. Essentially what it is, is it's, I call it automatic scissor tool. So in Cubase, say for example, if we wanted to repeat an audio file, we had to use the scissor tool like this, remove it, and then hit control D the amount of times we wanted to repeat it. So in Bitwig, there is a system built in that allows us to automatically do that. And that's called the operator system and it's available over here on your inspector panel on the left. So this here is what allows you to actually choose how many repeats you have. So this works basically if we have uh, the entire audio like this. So this is a, a large loop of an acid lead. And as we kind of turn this repeats up, it basically chops it into more and more divisions. So we could have it like on the beat like this. There's also various parameters we can apply here. One is the chance. So what that does, it basically assigns how much chance each of the chops has to actually play. Uh, then we have this curves over here. What this does, this bends the time of the repeats. So as you can see here, we've got this kind of transition curve from fast to slow. So this is really cool for creating these kind of speed up and slow down transitions. Like I said previously, we did this with the scissor tool. Most other DAWs still have to do this with the scissor tool or some kind of third party plugin. Just the fact that we can quickly do this on audio, on MIDI as well, you can chop MIDI clips and, and repeat them at, in the same kind of system. We can also choose fade outs, so you can kind of like cut each clip so that's a little bit cleaner. But what I'll usually do with this is I'll look at the last one and I'll time the last one with the grid using this curve. So we can kind of get this nice kind of groove where it sounds like it slots into place. Do you know what I mean? Where it kind of like hits the groove and then repeats with the, with the main rhythm. So usually with this thing, what I'll do is uh, I will bounce in place. And then we can just apply a bit of a gain curve so that it goes from low to high volume ever so slightly. It just evens out that transition. So number three is that the drum machine is much more than just a drum machine. It's essentially a multi-note container. So this allows you to load not only samples and plugins, but also 
note generator stuff. So you could create different chords for each drum rack. And then it allows you to, uh, in, in the piano roll, it shows you what the names of each of those chords are. So this is a nice way of making packs or presets of banks of chords that you might use. You can just transpose them to fit into almost any key. Um, and it also works for, you know, naming different clips in your drum machine. You can then see well, those clips in the piano roll. So you can dedicate certain scales to work and you can then see those scales displayed in the piano roll. So I'm gonna explain how to do that at the end of the video because it's a little bit lengthy, but once you save the preset, you can always just load it up as you need. I'm also going to upload a template which you can use to create your own chords and that. I'm gonna upload that to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So number four is the ability to drill down into a specific group in your project. So this is really cool. If you really wanna focus in on a specific element like just the drums or something like that, you can not worry about any other elements in the track and just focus in on specific stuff like that. How we do this is we right click on any group and we can say enter group. Now it's only going to show us stuff from within that group as if that group was its own entire project. And we also have this bar along the left hand side to show us that we can always just exit the group to go back into the full project uh, if we need. So a lot of people criticize Bitwig's timeline for looking a little bit messy with larger projects. But it's stuff like this that kind of solves that issue because if you just work methodically inside groups, you don't really have to worry about how the larger project looks because you can always kind of drill down to specific groups if you need. We can also still hear the entire project. So we can still reference stuff or we can solo just this group if we need to just focus in on these elements. Number five is Bitwig's ability to open Ableton Live projects. I'm sure you folks didn't know that, but it's actually really huge, especially for those users who are coming from Ableton because you could take projects that you had used or worked on and just load them in Bitwig and carry on working. So now there is a bit of a caveat here is that it doesn't load the projects exactly as they were. Obviously, there are some differences between the two DAWs, mostly down to the different devices that they have. So what Bitwig will do is it'll make its closest approximation to any devices that you had loaded in the project. So the EQs will kind of be the same and the compressors will kind of be the same, but stuff like operator, if you have any stuff like made an operator, it might approximate that using other devices in Bitwig. That being said, is it still a really interesting kind of cross-platform way of working? The issue is that you can't load Bitwig projects in Ableton. So if you're working uh, say on like a verse track with somebody who's got, you know, and you've both got different DAWs, you can only go the one way, you can't go the other way. That being said, it's still a pretty amazing feature in a DAW, uh, you know, allowing you to open another DAW's projects. Very clever. So now I'm gonna show you the method for creating chord pads in the drum machine. So the main issue that you might come across when creating this is that the MIDI communication between drum machine and any plugins after it is a little bit broken. I mean, it works, You can. there's a workaround, but it, essentially what's happening is Vital is trying to take the MIDI data from before the drum machine, but there's a workaround for this. So what we do is we can put in a note receiver and we can get this note receiver to receive data from any of these uh, devices that are loaded in the drum machine. So here, if we load the multi-note, which is basically the chord generator, this basically allows us to now route the multi-note to this note receiver over here. So now if we put in a chord, like let's say for example, just a basic minor chord, and this is triggering on C3. Now Vital receives the chord, but no MIDI on the other notes, which is essentially what we want. So now let's say for example, if we copy multi-note to a new thing, let's name this clip here, the drum chain, let's name this basic minor. And so here, let's say for example, move this up to the 15th. 
So I think this would be like an inverted minor or something. I'm not sure the exact terminology. And let's just write here. I'm going to call it this, but it's probably wrong. Correct me in the comments, please. So here, if we trigger this one, this is now no longer sending the chord, right? So how we fix this is by grouping the note receiver, holding control and duplicating it, and then setting this to the inverted minors multi-note, right? But now the issue is that this is sending the C sharp three, then it's applying the minor note changes for the chord, and then it's receiving on the other end. So actually it's, it's the wrong, it's, it's one semitone too high. So what we need to do is we need to transpose the entire chord down by one semitone here. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fast forward this process. So what I'm gonna do is just copy this a couple of times. So let's say, name them all different stuff. And then I'm gonna fast forward this pro process of linking all of the eight. So remember with each of these, we need to set the transpose down by an extra one. So two, three, And so now, as you can see, all of these chords are available in the piano roll. So you can just see like which chords. So now we can just make like chord progressions just like this. Super easy. So now we can save this as a preset and load it whenever we need. But also remember that the naming of these drum machine racks isn't dependent on a plugin actually being loaded. All you need to do is you can just load a blank container. Like let's say for example, I'm gonna load, I'm gonna load the chain. Then what we can do is we can just name this drum chain something like C, and then for whichever notes are in the scale, we can just name that B e sharp or no D sharp or whatever it is, doesn't matter. Um, now these are visible in the piano roll, you see? So we can create our own custom scales and save those as presets, which we can then load if we want to impose a scale onto the piano roll, or we could just use the, we get the note filter, and the key filter. The key filter is the one that we want to use because this allows us to just choose a scale and then it constrains any MIDI notes going through that to a specific scale. Awesome, that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, if you haven't yet, please consider hitting that like button. If you want the presets that I made in this video, check out the Patreon, links are in the description. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.